I have been controlling my model railroad with DCC-EX for over two years now. A lot has changed with the DIY DCC system since I did my initial video on it. Today I'm going to talk about my current system and the upgrades I've made, my experience with the system as a whole, and why I think DCC-EX is becoming the best system in model railroading, even if you can't code at all. DCC-EX originated out of the DCC++ system, which was initially a way to control a DCC model railroad using JMRI and an Arduino with a motor shield. This was a game changer in DCC model railroads, but still needed a computer to run it. DCC-EX changed that. The first big change was the ability to connect directly to the Arduino using Wi-Fi and the Y-Throttle protocol. This was done with a couple pieces of hardware. Now, I did an initial video on building a DCC-EX base station that I will link right up here at the end of this video as well as in the description. Now, I am running the latest development version of DCC-EX at the time of recording this, version 4.2.62, and I'm also using something different than the standard L298P motor shield. There are several other options for a motor driver that creates the DCC signal, but I am using the first Arduino shield designed by the DCC-EX team for DCC-EX. This is not only designed for DCC-EX, but it has a max output of 5 amps, which is way more than the 2 amps the standard motor shield can output. And you don't have to worry about frying your Arduino on this, as it only sends enough power to the Arduino to power the Arduino. The shield is still pretty new and they sold out pretty fast, but I'll go ahead and put a link to those and if you can't find one, there are some other options for more power that they have on their website. If you would like me to do an entire video on this, I can definitely do that. Leave that in the comments. This isn't the only new thing that's been updated. One big complaint I have seen is that even if you build this, you can't program locomotives with it directly. Well, with a recent update to Engine Driver, the app for Android, that has all changed. In Engine Driver, where you connect to your network, you will see something that says use native DCC EX commands. You'll want to select next on that. Then that what that will do is allow for you to select DCC EX in your menu where your throttles are, and you'll see you'll have some options to read and write the address, CVs, and things like that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to read the CV of our locomotive. Next, we can type in our new address for the locomotive, which in this case is going to be 4501, which is the number of the locomotive, and we can write to it. This can also be done through their EX Toolbox Android app as well. The EX Toolbox looks just like the programming screen for the Engine Driver app in DCC EX. The big thing that I noticed is that I did not have to tell it to send native DCC EX commands. I just put in my host address with my port and it was automatically connected. Note I was connected to the DCC EX Wi Fi system using it in access point mode. Now, this is all spelled out on their website, but I was able to do all the same things here. And I put another one of my locomotives on here and just had it read the address and you you can see that it read it just fine. Okay, so you're saying, Jimmy, that's all well and good, but I don't know how to use the Arduino software to load the code onto the Arduino. Well, that's not a problem. DCC EX has come up with a really smooth and slick installer, and it works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. I am running a Mac right here, and you can see that the program is running just fine. All you have to do is plug in your Arduino to a USB port on your computer. It walks you through all of the steps. You have to do zero coding. All you have to do is know what equipment you are using. It will go and find what you're looking for to install on. It will give you a selection of things to install on it and it will let you pick your motor shield at an LCD screen, all of these different things, zero coding required. And it works extremely easy. Anyone can do this so long as you can get the program open. And I absolutely love this. This is one thing that's really a turning point in my opinion for this system. Anyone can install this. 
There are also a ton of features that have either been added or are in testing, including X-Rail, which stands for Extended Railroad Automation Instruction Language. This allows for automation in DCC for a bunch of cool things like sequences and other triggered actions for things like signals and turnouts and all sorts of stuff. I've just begun to play with this, but I hope to implement this on a future layout. They've also been working on a turntable controller, an input-output expander, and a fast clock. There is a bunch of functionality being added to this, and the best part of all this is that the software is totally free. This is an entirely volunteer project. Now, I'm not one who usually does this, but there is this thing called Super Thanks. It's like a super chat you use in a live stream except for just a regular video. Now, 100% of every Super Thanks that I receive on this video will be donated to the DCCEX team to help fund their project. Another thing that DCCEX has is a very active Discord that is very organized. I've had a couple of issues that they were able to resolve very quickly. Basically, it's kind of like an unofficial customer support group chat. So that is what the DCCEX guys have been working on over the past two years. But I decided that I wanted to figure out a few of the non-coding things for DCCEX to bring it closer to the physical side to an off-the-shelf system. The first was a proper case. Now, quite a few people have made these and I made my own. I 3D printed this one after a little bit of trial and error. This one even has a spot for a two line LCD screen for the status. And I also plan on making a version that you can put a 40 millimeter fan on there to help keep the system cool. It is also compatible with the standard motor shield as well as the new DCCEX motor shield. Now, it is my opinion that Engine Driver is the best app for controlling a DCC model railroad. However, I have an iPhone and Engine Driver is for Android. So I picked up this $50 track phone Samsung Galaxy AO3S off of Amazon, though you can find prepaid Android phone for as low as $30 on Amazon. I do the minimum required to get the phone up and running and I don't activate the phone with the cell service. I just pair it with the Wi-Fi that is generated by the EX base station and now I have a controller. I also wanted a physical throttle of some kind. Now, I have used a volume knob for this in the past, but I wanted some function controls to it too. One of the cool things about Engine Driver is that you can use generic game controllers that are available on Amazon to ma and map DCC functions to it. I tested a few and this $7 generic mobile game controller is my favorite. In Engine Driver, you'll wanna open up your preferences and make sure you have Show Advanced Preferences selected. You'll then scroll down to where you see Gamepad USB Controller Setup. Next, you'll want to set up your Gamepad type. Now, for this controller, I found that the Utopia 360 Android C works best for using Engine Driver. So I went ahead and selected that. And next, you're going to need to figure out what all of your buttons do. There is a test Gamepad feature that can tell you what buttons are doing what so that you can tell them to do different features. So all you have to do is open up this test Gamepad and then start hitting buttons and take note of which buttons are being hit to what. Once you've figured this out, you'll be able to tell these specific buttons to do specific features in DCC. You'll then go through and select the various different buttons as you scroll down the menu and assign commands and functions to them. You'll have all of your functions such as increase speed, decrease speed, bell, horn, all of these different ones there that you can map to these different buttons. This setup really comes down to personal preference. I will tell you a couple things that I did. I use the up and down directions for my speed and throttle to increase and decrease speed. I use the four buttons in a little cluster, the A, B, C, D, to do my various functions. And then I use the two triggers at the top for changing which throttle is controlling and for stopping the locomotive. <laughs> So, how much does this setup cost? Let's say you have a spare 12 volt power supply and you're going to use your phone for control. You can build the DCCEX setup for under $50 shipped in the US. 
If you need to buy a power supply and want a dedicated phone for control as well as a game controller, you're probably going to be spending about $120 out the door, which is still a lot lower than the systems out there right now. You could even use an old cell phone or tablet like I have with this old Kindle Fire that can run engine driver on it. And it was just collecting dust in a drawer and I brought it out and now it runs this. Now if you go for the DCC EX Motor Shield, you're looking at about between $150 and $160, which is still pretty good for a 5 amp system. DCC EX has come a long way since it started and it is pretty impressive what it can do. This project is not slowing down anytime soon, and it is going to be awesome to see what they can do next. If you want to see how to build your own DCC EX station, check out this video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.